Shalom, shalom. What's up, y'all? This is Brother Tar, and today we are going to be discussing when did the ghost leave? All right, I say it again. When did the ghost leave? All right, now I know that sounds a little bit spooky, but you've actually um, heard of this topic before. All right, it's more commonly known um, as the Good Friday Doctrine. Or in the Bible, we would say three days and three nights. Now, the Good Friday Doctrine has been preached and taught all throughout the earth. And for most of us, we've never questioned it. We never looked into it. We never even researched it to find out if it was true. So today, we're going to see if it is biblically accurate and is it even physically possible based on the way we would count time all right or what we would say reckon the time according to the scriptures all right so i'm going to throw up a graphic and on the graphic it's going to show you two different chronologies so the top chronology it has the week starting on a monday all right the bottom chronology has the week starting on a Sunday. So let's look at the the top graph, the top part of the graphic, where it says uh, the week starts on a Monday. Now, if we use uh, Monday as day one, then you're gonna notice something quite interesting. The middle of the week actually falls on Thursday. Now, when we look down at the bottom graphic. It actually shows the week starting uh, on a Sunday and then the middle of the week lands on a Wednesday. Now that's very important as we go through uh, these two different chronologies. All right. So I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to read. It says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. All right. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of stuff is going on there. Uh, but for what we're doing, we just want to focus on a specific part. All right. So when we look at verse 27, it says and um, and it says in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Now, me being messianic, when I see that something sticks out. So we know that the Messiah or the Mashiach was killed or put to death. In the middle of the week or the mist of the week right so when we look at these two different uh, chronologies uh, referencing a week something interesting sticks out on the top chronology all right it actually has the week um, the mist of the week as Thursday however if using this chronology at the top he was cut off in the midst of the week wouldn't it be better labeled as Good Thursday? I mean, that's the day he actually died on. However, uh, was it's been purported that it's Friday. So they say Good Friday. So when we look at the graphic, we have Friday, which would be one day or the light portion of that day. Then we have the Shabbat. That's day two. And then... That's it, because if you remember, when Mary got to the tomb and spoke with the angel, he wasn't there. So he wasn't even in the grave on Sunday, right? That's according to the Good Friday Doctrine. So that's literally only one day and a quarter of a day, all right? Not even three days, not even possible. Also... Um, when you when we look at the top portion of the graphic, we see that he if he was in the grave on that Friday day, then he went in um, the grave 
that night, which is at the uh, prior to the Shabbat, so that would be one night, then it would be the night before Sunday, which makes two nights. So that's not even three nights he was in the grave. That's literally a day and a quarter and then two nights. Okay. So now let's take a look at the bottom graphic and let's see if this makes more sense. So if he goes into the grave on Wednesday day as the middle of the week, which I'm saying very specifically for a reason, then not only does he go in there for that Thursday daylight portion, that Friday daylight portion, and that Saturday daylight portion, you have three full days. All right. And then we see that on if he's in the grave on Wednesday night, he goes into the grave that Thursday night, which precedes the day. You have that Thursday night, that Friday night, and that Saturday night. All right, which which gives us a full three days and three nights. If you use the Good Friday doctrine, it's impossible to get three days and three nights. It's impossible for him to be cut off in the midst of the week, according to the Good Friday doctrine. So now we're going to go to John chapter 11, verse 9. And Yahushua answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. So the Mashiach is informing us that there are twelve hours in a day. All right. Now, when we observe a normal day, we think of twenty-four hours, a twenty-four hour expanse of time or period of time. All right. But for the concerns of in the ancient time, they mainly only reference the light portion as the day, because that's when they were able to do civil work. They were able to do agricultural work. They were able to actually see things. All right. So when we look at the graphic, um, we see that the day, the light portion was broken up into four equal parts. OK, when you look at this graphic, it's going to show you. We have the first hour, the third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour, and the twelfth hour. Very important when you study the Bible, you go through the scripts, and you understand what these different time frames are. All right? So we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 through 50. All right? So it says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. So when you look at the graphic, you're going to notice something that from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness. Now, normally at this time of the day, it's the brightest time of the day, but something was was happening. Something was going on. All right. So we're going to step into our ancient mind and we're going to notice something that what if what if what if today it's, it's, it's bright and sunny outside, then all of a sudden a thick darkness covered the atmosphere. All right. So that's what's going on at this time. All right. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. That is to say, Yah, Yah, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them stood, some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias and straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Verse 50, Yahushua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost so now we see that around 3 p.m is when the ghost left all right or when he passed away or when he died all right now why is that important that's very important all right according to deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 23 
All right. It says his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. All right. Remember the light portion that day. For he that is hanged is a curse of Yah. That thy land be not defiled, which Yah Almighty giveth thee for inheritance. So technically, that's why I said he was only um, dead or in the grave for one full daylight of day and a quarter of a day, right? So between 3 and 6 p.m. is more than enough time to take the body down from the tree, stake, cross, whatever, however you want to say it, and take the body to the tomb, prepare it for burial, and have the tomb sealed with daylight. So the, so the body and the person does not defile the land, okay? So the person is, the body itself has been a curse for being hung, but the land should not be defiled. Very important. All right. So this is why I said he was, according to that top chronology of, of the Good Friday doctrine, that he could have only been in the tomb for one day and possibly in a little bit of a quarter. All right. So when we visually break down the Good Friday doctrine, it's really a fallacy that's been taught and spread throughout the earth because scripturally, it doesn't match up. It doesn't add up. Biblically, it doesn't work. All right. So hopefully um, the visuals I put up have been a blessing to you. They help you to really get into what you are reading, to really comprehend what's actually occurring. So until next time, this is Brother Tar. And today you have just learned when the ghost left. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're so beautiful, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yeah, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her. She prevented them that desire her in making herself known unto them. Whosoever seeketh her early shall have no great revenge, and he shall find her sitting at his doors.